Hello, join me as I talk to Dina, who shares her nightmare visa story from Uganda to the USA. Excited? Please join me. Hello, welcome to Take a Step a Better You. In this story, I'm chatting with Madina Chomhangi from Uganda who's sharing her story, how she tried to get a visa to America. So if you ever thought about coming to America, getting a visa, especially from Uganda or any other country, uh, please hang on, I'm, I'm gonna I'll watch the chat with me and Dina. Her name is Madina uh, Chamohangi. So if you are new here, my name is Sherifa Nakalema, I'm a business owner in Virginia, USA, and I'm working online full time now, and I encourage all of you to come do the same. That's why I share these stories. I've covered two stories before, because here I said take a step to make your life better, especially if you work from home, especially if you want to make money online, those kind of stories. So, so far I've covered two. I talked to Zuria, I also talked to Wana, although his Wana was a different kind of story because he's already here in America, right? Today, this is the third one, and I'm talking to Madina Chomohangi, she goes by name Dina, and it's interesting because I talk, I, I met her just like two days ago because I was on the on, on TikTok and you know how this brings those uh, TikTok videos in front of you as you are like just going. So she was there talking about how she wanted to get a visa from the American embassy in Uganda and she went on and on. I found it interesting. I said, these are the kinds of people I like to talk to. So I clicked on the profile to her profile, right? Lucky now, she has her phone number right there. In fact, I just tapped on it, it called her, and she answered. And since then we talked, I said, I want to talk to you. Come share this story with my viewers. She said, yes. So we did it. And uh, without, uh, in fact, what she does, she calls herself CEO of Dinner's Collections. She's going to explain what that is, what she does in Uganda. I don't want to spend so much time. If you know anyone who has a story to share, but also a story of working from where they are because i'm trying to say make money from where you are because you can make money online so here i share how you do affiliate marketing step by step we just promote other companies products to make commissions to earn commissions and as you do that you start being like on youtube youtube pays you tiktok could pay you other platforms can pay you as you start growing right so uh in fact below you are going to put on, on top of dinners, uh, Instagram and TikTok, mine, uh, I'll put a video or a link that takes you to me, to know more about me and also to see if you want to join my community and learn what we do here. But for now, not to take this, to make this too long, let's talk to Dina. Please excuse our connection. We had a problem with the internet connection. Oh my God. So you may, it may pause a little bit, it may jump a little bit, but we did it. Okay, we, we almost canceled it, but we ended up doing it. So please excuse us. She had uh, a slow connection, but we are so determined we did it. We had to set up the whole night to do this interview. So let's go watch my chat with Dana, who's telling her story about wanting to come to America. She's not in America, she's in Uganda. See what happened, okay? Next, thank you. Hello, welcome, Miss Dina. I'm so excited to have you here at short notice. I've already said something about you and how we met, but please let's take this moment to uh, let me ask you to please introduce yourself to my viewers, to our viewers. Say something about like your name, where you, what you do, and something about yourself briefly, please. Oh. Hello, viewers. I'm Madina Chomhanji. I'm a mother of four boys. Whoa. I'm a businesswoman, I'm a TikToker, and I'm from Uganda, East Africa. Okay, welcome. Thank you for saying yes at short notice to tell this story. I already mentioned Thank why you. I decided to do this. And hopefully, the intention is to benefit someone, even if it's just one person. It's, I think even if it's just one person, we've done our, our part, okay? Because I talk about these things all the time and people don't believe me. They say, for you are in America, so we don't, we're already over there. So they don't believe me. Now, when they hear you say, tell the stories and you are in Uganda, maybe, maybe this time, someone's going to listen. So, but before we get to, this is about your visa story, trying to come to America. 
but it all started because of COVID. Um, yeah. It destabilized you, right? So tell us something about what you are doing, how you're making your money before COVID. Oh, so before COVID, I had a cosmetic shop mm -hmm. and I was dealing in hair, I was selling hair, I was selling wigs, I was selling beauty products. Uh, that's all. I wasn't making hair, I wasn't plating, but I was just selling. And where was this located? Yeah, it was located in Nansana. Everything good? You are, you are happy? Yeah, I was fine. I was fine. It was working well. It was bringing in the profits that I wanted. I was fine. And you were not thinking about going anywhere, leaving Uganda? No, no, no. So COVID came. So how did he deal with that? How did that affect your business? Well, when COVID came, the government put on a lockdown. So we were all under lockdown. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't work for at least three months. Wow. And that was the only source of income I had by then. Yeah. And so I had to make the toughest decision to mm -hmm. sell. Well, the, the decision was to sell. I had wow. to sell it to look after my kid, look after myself and pay the rent at home. And I'm thinking if you decided to sell COVID time, they didn't pay you much because people didn't have money at that time. No, no. I sold everything at wholesale price. Wow. So sorry. So, okay. Then you get on, you're at home. And then what happened? Because as you're at home, now you have to be thinking, I wonder what I will do after. Now I sold my business, right? Mm. So during COVID, as you're home, they're thinking, what was, what do you, what were you planning after, so, like, after they opened up? After selling everything, I had to think have to think of the way to make money and i didn't see any 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 anywhere i could make that money at that moment because everywhere was everywhere was locked mm -hmm. so 2021 came late 2021 i sat with my friend i was telling her about the situation how everything was going and she she told me about america she mm. told me about uh, american visa uh, how it works, how people are going, how people are making money. And by then I didn't have any knowledge about it. So, so it's your friend it. who started saying yeah. make money in America, right? Yeah. Did she mention how much they're making or she didn't? Because we we're about to get to the agent talking about how much they're making. Did your friend no, also say my... how much they're making? No, my friend didn't know much. Okay. Yeah, Did she, she didn't know, know much, anyone? but she talked. She told me she had someone that knew, that had the information that I needed. Okay. But you didn't say, let me talk to that person? Yeah. Of course, I told her I needed to see the person because I was desperate. Uh -huh. So she introduced me to an agent. We got talking. He told me how America was good, how people are making money. It's times 10, the money we make here in Uganda. And I was like, uh, No, okay. times 10 is fine, but there's a cost of living also. So how much, about that. how much exactly did he say? How much could you make if you came to America? Well, if I remember well, he said the least I could make a week is seven millions. In a week? Yeah. Wow. Let's, let me do a quick math here. Even at the lowest exchange rate, let's see. Okay, let, the highest exchange rate. Divide by maybe 4,000 almost, right? Okay, yeah. 1750. 1,750 times 52, you know how much that is? A year is no. $91,000. Do you know which people who make that kind of money in the USA? And I understand no. you didn't say you need, so what skills did you have to make this kind of money? Well, he told me you'd never, you didn't need any skills. You didn't need ed education. You didn't need anything. Yes, really? Because in America, there are jobs for everyone. Okay, but making that kind of money? Yeah. He really? said that even even the even the uneducated person, a P1 uh -huh. dropout, can make yes. that much money. So how about the educated ones? I guess they're making millions. Huh. He said those. Um, now he was giving me an example of citizen of of citizens of America. He uh -huh. said at least they make between twenty to twenty five a week. Twenty five what? Twenty to twenty five millions a week. The citizens. Anyway, let me ask you. Where were you meeting this person? Did they have like an uh, office? No, the first the first day he came home, he came to my home. You allowed him in your home? 
Yeah, I invited him home because I was, I trusted my friend. Okay. But do you know that that's, if you had said, let me, if you had offered to meet him somewhere and you realized he didn't even have an office or something, maybe you have like, like you have thought, oh, this may be fake, could be fake. Because offering someone to come to you, you don't, go, you don't get to know much about them. Is what I mean? Were they like mm. driving a car? How are they coming to your house? The reason why I invited him home because I had a nine months old baby by then. So I couldn't move with him. Okay. But did he yeah. like drive a car outside? How was he arriving? He came on a bike. <laughs> oh! What? Yeah. On a bike. On a, a bike. Border. Motorcycle? Border border? Yeah, motorcycle. Oh, that was a red flag already. Okay, so, and you were using Luganda? Which language are you using? We were using Luganda. Okay. So, but he, had he been to America? Did he say he was had been to America? No. Okay, so he said, what kind, what state? Where would he take you? He, he was taking me to Boston. Oh, Boston. Because Boston. he said all the Bagandas are in Boston. Okay, Boston. And the Boston. person I was supposed to stay with is also in Boston. So he never mentioned California? Yeah, he mentioned California. Yeah, he first gave me a, an option of California, but then he said California is expensive. And there are very little Baganda in California. So okay, did he, you know he gave... that actually Boston is not a state? You know Boston is just a city. So it's Massachusetts, actually. <laughs> I didn't know much about America. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what did he say to do for you and how much would it cost as far as the visa? Well, everything. He wanted seven millions for everything. Because he was supposed to get me he, he was supposed to get me a place to stay. Mm -hmm. And the person I was supposed to stay with was supposed to get me a job mm -hmm. on that money. Mm -hmm. And the visa also was included on that money. Okay. And yeah. and how does he get the visa so easily like that? This is America we're talking about. So because we don't have much knowledge about it, he will just tell you everything. I'm going to do for you everything. Your only issue is to go there and do the interview. And that's all. Okay. Just show your face. So did you have the money? Did you have the seven million? No, I didn't have it by then. Uh, by the way, we negotiated. We negotiated and we ended up I we ended up agreeing on five millions. Okay. But but on a condition that I had to pay three point five before he starts on the visa, on the paperwork. So when you so have had a, the money like this, does he sorry? start somewhere? How do you prove you gave him the money? Yeah, he gives you a receipt. Really? He gives you a receipt with his names. Okay. He has like a book? Yeah. A receipt book? Yeah, a receipt book, yeah. Wow, these are real. Okay, so what happens? Does he ask you to fill out some work, background information about you? No, no, let's go back to, to the money. I mm. didn't have the money. Oh, yeah. Then, yeah. Mm. But I had a car. I oh. had a car at home. Yes. So after he told me everything and after I saw that I was so naive. I thought that whatever he told me was true. So I had to sell my car. You're gonna I make sold my car. Wow. I sold my car. Mm -hmm. I made the payments and he started on the on the paperwork. Okay. So I asked you to take you by the way, do they take your passport? How do they no. they just see the passport? No, yeah, they just take pictures, they take the passport number and your pictures, that's all. Okay, so remember, you have children. So what's yeah. going on? What, what are you thinking? That, you, okay, I'm going to America, and then what's going to happen to my children? Well, when the dream came... The dream? Remember, I had, sold the, remember <laughs> this, I had sold the car now. Oh, yeah. So I had to settle the kids because I had to put them somewhere. I was sure that they were safe, at least for the for the first three months that I will be away. Mm -hmm. So I put the two kids in boarding. Why were you stopping? And I had a night. Let me stop you a little bit. You said the first three months. What does that mean? So, so you because I months. knew that I knew that when I go to America, mm -hmm. within these three months, oh. I will be okay. I will be settled. So what? I had to settle them here. Uh-huh. 
during that period, eh, by the time they come back from school, uh -huh. everything would be fine. So with three months, you come to America and come back? You go to America and come back? No. Mm. After three months, I would take them to, now I would be already settled. So I would take them to my mother because I could afford everything now. I would afford everything. I would buy everything. Mm -hmm. I would afford a beautiful school, an international school. So mm -hmm. that was my, that was oh, my thinking. Really by then. International schools? Why yeah. international school? They're Ugandans. Why do they need an international school? Because I knew I was going to make money. And but I wanted do you them know that some international schools are not better than local schools? Do you know that? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you were so excited. I wish I saw you <laughs> in bed like at <laughs> night. That's crazy, you know? You know that's crazy now that you think about it, right? <laughs> so, I was okay. so naive. No, very. So you text your information and keeps calling you and updating you because you have to schedule an interview to, to, at the embassy. I remember like after a week, I called him and he was like, relax. The moment your papers are, are, are done, I'm going to call you. So you don't want to know everything he's putting in? What the reason were you giving for coming to America? I asked him, I asked him. Aren't you going to ask me anything? He said, I'm going to put everything that I know will be okay for them to allow you. To but you're the one doing the interview, though. Yeah. So he said, if I put that you, you know, if I put the information you want me to put, it may hinder you from going. So I have to put the information that I know will be easier for them to know that you will come back. But at least did he tell you what he's putting? No, he said after putting everything, he's going to call me. Then we go through it together. Mm -hmm. And did he do but it? Un unfortunately, he didn't. Okay, so what happened? So you wait. I, I kept calling um, a week to, to the interview I called. And he was like, you know what? I'm going to give you the papers a day before. Because I don't want you to cram these things. When you reach there, you're going to be like a robot. They'll be asking you this. You answer that. So I'm going to give you these papers a day before. And the day comes, I call him. He was like, no, you get the papers tomorrow. But he didn't, didn't know. want to allow you to understand this thing that he's putting. At least if he had told you on the phone that, you know what? This is when they ask you this, you answer this. Something at least to be familiar with the answers, right? I really didn't know that his reasons. No, Up to now, I don't, I just, don't no. get his reasons. No, those are the reasons. He didn't want you to cram it. He was serious. That's what he means. <laughs> yeah, he meant that. You gonna, yeah, up, to now, up to now, I still ask myself, what <laughs> was the reason? Okay. So now, slow down, please. Tell us the story. The day comes, you are going for the interview. So the day comes, I'm going to the interview. I get a bike. I called him. I found him in town. He gave me the papers. My interview was at 9.30. He gave me the papers at exactly 8.30. You never met him anywhere else except... No. No. So where do you he find never, the papers? He never allowed us to meet. Wow. So that That's means I had, I, had, I had less than 40 minutes to cram everything, to go through everything. And because I was panicking... And I had the other thing that I'm going to be interviewed by a white man. Mm -hmm. So I reached the embassy. What I didn't know, what I didn't know was Amer they were trained. So when I reached the embassy, I still had the confidence, by the way. But when I reached there, I found there other people that had come for the interview. So what they were saying, America is not easy. They don't allow just anyone. And I was like, hmm. This guy told me my job was just to, to go there and say this, say so that. Who, who so was he started panicking. On the day of the interview, or you mean you had met some other people talking about it? No, on the day of the interview. Mm -hmm. On the day of the interview. So I reached there, the lady interviews me, no, and she no, asked no, me no, these no, simple, no. simple questions. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Before you get to that, set, give us a setting. You come, you arrive, and... At the yeah, I came. I arrived, I arrived at the embassy uh -huh. and everything was normal. It was normal until they put us in a certain room. It was like, um, it wasn't even a room, it was like a tent. 
outside so we were yeah outside like how many people like 15 we were like 15. oh because, because they have to they have an appointment now they don't have those long yeah. legs no 15 because okay. you first to see you you first have to sit outside then they'd be calling like five people to go inside okay yeah so what are you thinking there well i was going through the papers and most of the things i couldn't understand oh i didn't even know the job where it was located that i was supposed to say it's where i'm working in uganda yeah uh-huh so i had <laughs> So I had to cram these the major things, uh -huh. not forgetting the small things matters the most. Okay. So in my mind, I crammed the bigger things. Okay. So the time comes, they call you. It's your time. They call me. The lady asked me. The first question was, "Why are you going to America?" I told mm -hmm. her I was going for a, for a vacation. Oh. She said, "Okay." Mm -hmm. I was going. Yeah, I was going for a vacation. She said, "Okay. What are you going to be doing?" I said I want to I want to tour America. I want to go to this place. I want to go to this place. And she asked me like four questions. Then the final question was, how long do you think it takes someone to travel from Uganda to America? And I was like, because I had people saying 16 or 18 hours. I was like 16 hours with confidence. <laughs> then she told me. <laughs> But you are given five days at work. So how are you going to, how do you, how are you going to, how can you tell me that you're going to spend two days going and two days coming back? That means you're going to spend one day in America. And I was quiet. I was blank because I couldn't say anything. And I didn't see that part in the papers because I didn't get the time. No, no, no. In the part... Uh, what normally would happen they say when are you going we say the first when are you coming back the fifth so that's how they would see it. they would say like they would put so it. she again she asked me who is sponsoring your trip and i was like myself she said okay so how much are you, how much do you do you make a month that is going to take you on the plane because you're not going to america this is not going to america you're just going to be on the plane how much do you get paid that you're going to be on the plane for two days and on the plane again for two days just just to tour the clouds <laughs> <laughs> the way she's she said how that much do you get paid a month maybe the reason was to just fly we wanted to just fly. i went to mute again because yeah. even if i wanted to gamble i couldn't so uh -huh. i went mute again she, got you. <laughs> she looked at me she looked at my papers. I don't know what she wrote in the computer. Just gave me back my passport and she was like, you know what? You're not qualified. I remember I was in that room for at least five to ten minutes. I put my head on the desk. I was like, what do I do? I sold my last option. All the hopes I had was, was shattered. So I was like, what do I do? So I after even they call give the... that decision like that, do they look sad or what? How do they look at you? She, you know, she looked at, she was amused. She was like, oh. is this person, I think she even thought that I'm, 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 an, I'm an illiterate. Because she was looking at me like, are you okay? They gave you five days leave at work and you're going to spend that whole money on the way on the plane going and coming back coming back no of course you know that you don't want to come back they know so that was a very big blow and i couldn't answer mm -hmm. the truth is i couldn't i was just mute i sat there and i was like now i'm done i think she saw it and she was like no this one is not even going anywhere so they ask she just you to me back. Yeah, I says, please leave, or you stay seated, or how do you stand up and leave? She gave me the, <laughs> I remember she gave me the papers, and she was like, you're not qualified. I looked at my papers. She didn't even say leave. So when I put my head on the desk, she was like, I'm very sorry. I know how you feel. I'm very sorry, but you're not qualified. So I wanted to ask her, why? <laughs> Mm. why am i all the questions i was supposed to ask the agent i wanted to ask this person why 
She already gave you that the, was my question. The answer, she already gave you the answer. The whole thing. So, uh, after thing like is, after like five to ten minutes, she called uh, a security a security lady. Oh, she was like, "Please escort this one outside. We still have a lot of people to work on." Can I say something uh, there mm. for the, the other the viewers? Mm. You have to know something they are looking for. For the Americans, at least, they only yeah. looking for one thing. Are you going? Are you really coming to America to to to, to visit and go back, or you want to stay in America? The only mm. way you convince them that you don't that uh, to to give you a visa is if they see you don't have any need to stay in America. You are you have your family, you have your job, you have your money, you have everything in Uganda. Maybe you are when you are older, you can say, okay, I'm going to visit my children, I'm coming back. You, mm. you don't want to work in America. But if mm. you look like you're the kind that's going to come to America and say, I don't want to go back, mm. maybe you have the money. I have a friend who went with this with their daughter, husband, wife, and a daughter. They wanted to come, mm. to, to come, mm. and they, they gave the two, they didn't give the girl. Mm. It wasn't about money this time because they have mm. the money. But they said, mm. no, this one will not come back. Mm. So they are looking for only one thing. Are you likely to, to refuse to come back? Mm. That's all. That's all. Once the answer is they think you may not come back. No. So so what happened? <laughs> what do you do? Well, you came out. I came out. I had my papers. I was... The truth is... I won't lie. I cannot tell you how I how I got home from the embassy. I don't remember. You didn't take a taxi or something? How do you go? I don't know. I swear. But I know I, I was on a bike. <laughs> if I had got a taxi, I don't even know where they would have taken me. Because the only thing I remember, I came out of that room I came outside, I got a bike. The next thing I was in the boys' room. At home. I had like a thousand questions, but I couldn't what? find the answer. When you say boys' room, I mean at home. Yeah, at home. Uh-huh. I couldn't find the answer. I was so angry. The only question that was in my head, it was the other. Why did he put five days? Why didn't he allow me to go through those papers? Why didn't he allow me to tell him what to do? So did you talk to anyone between leaving the embassy and getting home or just... No, no, I didn't. I reached home. I reached home at around 11 a.m. I slept and I woke up at around 9 at night my phone was buzzing this same agent was calling me because he wanted his balance he, he wanted his he was like you know you see this is why i don't like working for people i worked for you because of your friend i didn't know you now i know you got your visa but you don't want to give me my balance i found like a thousand messages i couldn't even answer i just got the phone sent him a message and i told him you know what Please give me time. Give me time. I'm going to talk to you, but not now. So I remember after nine, I sat from nine up to two at night. I was thinking. You talked to your no friend, to to. the friend that, you, uh, uh, that uh, recommended you to that agent? I didn't. I don't know. I don't know why, but for some reason I was feeling embarrassed. Embarrassed? Yeah. Why? I was feeling really embarrassed. I was like, I think you sold you, you blamed yourself, but actually I was I was embarrassed and guilty at the same time. I don't know why. For some reason, it took it took me like a month. I used to feel embarrassed and guilty. No, embarrassed. I think you told some people that you may go to America, right? Did you mention to some people? I think I mentioned it to my sister and my mom. You feel, you feel like, you failed, like, you, like a failure, like you failed, right? Yeah. It was me. It was 
it was just mixed feelings. I don't even know how I felt exactly, but I felt guilty. I felt but, like but I'm, embarrassed. You know, I want to say something here. Mm. Do you know it's good you felt like that while you're in Uganda? Mm -hmm. Do you know you could have that kind of feeling when you're inside here in America? After you arrive and realize mm. you're not allowed to work, and realize you have nowhere to stay, and realize you have no money to send to Uganda, and yeah. some people, they stop them at the airport. They put them on the same plane that brought them. They send them back. But you see... Well, we, yeah. You leave Uganda, you reach, you reach in America, and they bring you back? They stop you at the border, yes. That's wow. why you see that what they do, the airlines, they are so strict. They check your passport, they check your papers to make sure they are not taking you to bring you back. You know, they're very strict at the airport. So someone can put in all that money, you even yes. buy a ticket that they yeah, bring you back? They refuse them all the time, yes. They put you on the same airplane that brought you. Wow. Yes, so, but then if you travel to America, you know. In Tebe, they are very strict. They check and check and check. They don't want to take someone who is going to be bouncing back. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, but there's another stage that is coming in. So when, let me take this opportunity to explain. When you get a visa in Uganda, that's a visa allowing you to come enter America, right? Yeah. So when you get to the border, they're going to ask you, why are you here? Mm. And then you're going to explain why. Depending yeah. on what the reason you tell them, mm. they're going to give you another visa. That mm. one is for being inside. Mm. So, depending, like for you, who wanted to do something for five days, mm. they can give you maybe one month or maybe mm. two weeks. So, what that means, you are allowed to mm. be in for only that time. Mm. So, there are people who have multiple, like, like two years to enter America. They gave them mm. a multiple in Uganda. So, they have two years to come to America, right? That mm. means they can come and go. But at the border, they're going to decide how long they stay inside. Mm. Yeah, so if they gave you a month, before mm. the month ends, you better be gone. Okay. Although you have the visa and the multiple entry, you can still come back. You don't have to go to ask for another visa, right? Mm. In the embassy. You're already allowed mm. to come and go, come and go. But you cannot mm. mess up this visa they give you at the entry. It used to be, when a long time ago when we came, the, the, we had like, a, it was standard, six months. Hmm. Visitors visa was six months, but now they don't do that. You can't get six months. So now you'll be crying. They gave you maybe three weeks. Mm. But inside, people are telling you that visa, you have to be out of America in three weeks. Otherwise, you're going to be illegal. Mm. Going to, yeah, anytime they find you, if you're like right here where I am, they can, mm. they can deport you. Oh. Yes. Now you realize the American system, the way it works, you need a social security number. You need a work permit. You need this. You need that. You're not allowed to do anything. Okay. Then okay. you realize those people who say they'll refuse you, receive you, they receive you maybe to stay there for a few days. But mm. they can't keep you for long. They don't mm. even have a space for you. If you are lucky, you go to people who have like a spare bedroom, maybe there, but you better work soon and start paying for it or something. Now, that is the biggest problem because they do not tell us everything here. All they say, you're going to go, you get somewhere to stay, you start making money. How are you going to make the money when you need the work permit? Because we don't even know that you need a work permit. Here in Uganda, we don't know anything. We are not educated I, I, enough. I want to say that's not true. You didn't try to find out. Do you know why? Hmm. People who go to UAE, they know that you have hmm. before you go, you make sure there's a job and you're allowed to work. People mm. who go to Saudi Arabia, they know. Everything has mm. to be in order. How mm. come you think it's America that doesn't care? You just come and work. Mm. Uh, no, I think people are choosing not to understand. Mm. Oh, yes. So, what happened <laughs> for you? Now, you wake well, up. I was there. I had to sit back and start thinking afresh. Because I had to do something. I had to make sure that 
Now everything has failed. I have to make this money before the kids get back from school. So how do I make this money? So how, how where do, do you end with the agent? With the agent? After final, Sorry? the agent. Yeah. Did you finally tell him what, what happened? Yeah, I told him. In the morning, I told him. I told him I have been failed. So he asked me why I told him because of the days you put. Uh -huh. And he, he never called me back. Really? Ne I called again. I, I just wanted to tell him at least give me back one M. Let me yes. start from there. He never received my calls again. He blocked you? Even my friend that connected me, I tried talking hand to her and she was like, he's avoiding me. So because you thought you were going to ask for some money back, right? Yeah, yeah. So, and why did he give you the papers to understand everything? Sorry? He never gave you the papers to understand? No, 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 no. He gave but me the papers one hour to the interview. Is it possible this friend of yours was involved in the this whole deal? At some point, I think she was involved. Because sometimes they have these ladies they work with, especially when they're spamming people, like scamming people, scamming. At Here, some at point, least... I think. At some point, she, I think she was involved because after some time, she started avoiding me. Yeah, because they have people they talk to. They say, "Oh, that one, she has the money and she doesn't know these things." Go talk to her, convince her, right? After some time, she started avoiding me, and I was like, "Okay." Okay, now so tell here, that, without making this too long, so what did you do after? Okay, I sat down, I sat in my room, like after a week, I was going through TikTok. Remember, I was desperate. I saw someone saying he bought a bike, a, a bike at 2.8 million, and within within six months, he, he, he bought other three bikes. Hmm. How? And I was like, okay, now this is a good business. <laughs> I call, I called someone and I was like, do you know where they sell old bikes? He was like, I know. I said, okay, we went, we purchased three bikes. <laughs> Remember, on the other money, after settling the settling the kids and the agent, I remained with eight millions. Really? Because I was keeping it for the ticket okay. and to leave some for my mom because I had left uh, the other nine months with her. Okay. So I bought I bought three bikes. You make a decision really quickly. For me, the moment something brings the moment money is involved. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something to learn from this. <laughs> I mean, the moment you. money is involved and and it's good money. Uh -huh. I don't give it time. Okay, you're gonna learn to give it time. Ngamunaga invest in two border borders. Okay. I don't even want to think about it because it was the worst decision of my life. Yeah. The first, the first, the very first person that came to take a bike, he he gave me, he paid me two weeks in advance, and I was like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is what this is what people should do. Okay. Even the second guy, I paid me three. He he paid me three weeks in advance. I said yes. It's done. <laughs> That was the last time I heard from them. Okay, do they know each other? No. No, but I think it's a trick for all of them. It's they their trick. Most, you. Not all of them, but most of them. I want to convince you. No, yeah, not but... most of them. Not all of them, but most, some. Okay, that bike in business, I, I'm actually not very interested to hear. That's it. <laughs> No. It's not even interesting because the first bike they just brought me scrap. <laughs> it got yeah. into an accident. They just called me. Your bike is here. I went and brought it home. I don't even no. Let's not go there. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So let's move on. So after mm -hmm. the whole bike thing, you lost your money. You remained with just one bike. Then what happened? Yeah, I remained with one bike. I again. I sold it again. You sold it. I sold it again. Uh -huh. All this. Uh, no, it took me time. By the way, it took me time. I think uh, the guy was. I got one guy that was. The guy was okay. 
Okay. So he was with it like for nine months. Then oh. after I told him, you buy it. He oh, bought it. Good. I got a loan. I added on and I started my own business. Okay. Yeah. So you made some money on one bike. Yeah. He made some good money because he was bringing in 80,000 every week. 80? Oh, that's good. Yeah, 80. Okay. After yeah. paying him, that's a net for you? Yeah, that's for you. Okay. 80 every week. So I sold the bike and oh, you sold I it? got another loan. So I started my own business slowly. And I'm telling you, I wish I did this before, before the visa, all the visa saga. Things happen to make you learn. Because if you had not gone through that, you wouldn't have been satisfied to settle in Uganda. Mm. You have been mm. thinking and thinking and wishing. I thought you still had one bike. You don't have any bikes anymore? Uh, no, I sold. Now I sold the only remaining bike I sold it. Oh, okay. So now you did yeah. what? What are you doing right now? Uh, I have a boutique now. I have a boutique. Mm -hmm. I do makeup at, as part time. Okay. Sorry, I do makeup as part time. And I'm a, I'm a TikToker. So that's but it. You, ma you make money from TikTok? TikToking? Not yet. Not yet. But I'm hoping. Yeah, I know. I, I suggest you turn that into a YouTube. Like a TikTok, but combination with YouTube. Because YouTube, you will have a chance to make some more, some money faster on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, I'm think, I, I, was, I was thinking about it. I want to start, yeah. I'm going to start. Yeah, you need, uh, because you have 30K followers over there. Although mm. I would suggest when you come to YouTube, maybe you could start another TikTok, use English. Because you are using mm. mix English and Luganda. But you want to have a strong English speaking audience. So mm. that you can connect with the audience on other countries. Mm. Yeah, so you can do both. You can have the mm. Uganda on the TikTok, the way you're doing. But mm. I would suggest you start over again, you create a new TikTok, English, and then start a YouTube channel to go with that. And this stuff you do, showing people makeup and stuff, you do? You show people how to do makeup? Yeah, I've ever done only one video on TikTok. Yeah, but you know how to do makeup, right? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yes. Though today I didn't put anything, but I know. That's a good one to teach people. Mm. Because remember, YouTube works with hours. Mm. So they want 4,000 hours in a year. Mm. Then, yes, you have people have to watch your videos for 4,000 hours mm. in a year, in 365 mm. days. And mm. you have to have at least 1,000 followers. Uh, so subscribers. Hmm. So when you get those two, they start putting ads on your videos. Hmm. Yeah, that's how the the smallest way to start making money for from YouTube, and then you can okay. also can talk about affiliate marketing and all that stuff. Now let's make this shorter. Let me. What would make you like? How are you doing now financially? How how are things going? Okay, I'm not where I want to be, but I'm okay. We were fair, okay. You say we, we were Muslim, we said Alhamdulillah, thank God. So, yeah. what times are not easy, they're not easy. In the yeah, whole yeah, they are tough, but I'm fine. What I'm would fine. make I'm very you fine. comfortable? What would make you comfortable? How much would that be every month? Well, according to how Uganda is right now, mm. at least three millions a month, okay. Three million, remember the calculator. Let's yeah, see. if you have kids, if you yes. have kids, you have to pay rent, you have to pay fees, at least three million. Okay, if I use that other rate that I was using, sorry, three million. I'm going to mm. use four thousand, but it's a little bit high for the the exchange rate, right? Oh, seven fifty. Mm. Seven fifty a month. So seven fifty divided by four point five. Ah, okay. About one hundred and sixty dollars a week, one sixty. So you could, I uh, think when I talk, you're going to learn, the, if you learn the affiliate marketing, the kind of stuff we do, it's very easy to, so I'm assuming you're not making 3 million right now. Mm. I'm, I'm assuming you're not making 3 million right now. Uh, no, I'm not okay. yet there, but I, yes. I'm somehow, somewhere. So if you made an extra, like how much a month, like a million a month would be okay. Mm. Very yes? okay. Online. Yeah. To add to what mm. you're doing right now without mentioning what you're doing right now, right? 
Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Oh, like another 250 a month mm. online. That is possible mm. if you put in the, the hours. Okay, let's talk about something. Mm. Always when I come here, I ask people something mm. they know for sure. I know you are young. You say you're almost 30 years, right? Yeah. Me, I'm 56. I've lived, I've lived. So if I asked you, what do you know for sure about people? So far in your years of life. Well, um, according to my age mm -hmm. and my experience, yes, I can say um, people are creative creatures. Creative, and you know everyone is looking for a way to survive. Yep. So if you're ignorant, they are going to use you. But if you're smart enough, then you escape the users. Like the, the visa, so, the, that visa situation, I'm sorry that I'm interrupting. That visa situation mm, was about ignorance on your part. Thank you. Yes. So I would suggest we first, you first know someone's true intentions mm. before making any decision. How do you know you that the true intentions? You first know someone, someone's true intentions, what he has for you, what he wants for you. How you know, do you know that? Before, doing, before making any decision that they put you into. Because as I said, if you're ignorant, they're going to use you. But if you're smart enough, they're going to, you're going to escape it. So how, how could you have done that differently, the visa issue? I wish I knew this woman better. Sometimes I don't even blame the agent. Because no. when you sit down and think, there are things that come, you know, there are things that you remember one by one, you know. You try to, you remember like, you try to connect the dots and you'll be like, this person wasn't good. Yeah. And maybe they knew yeah. had a little money that you, you, you could do this, right? She wasn't good. Okay, so that's about people. So what yeah. else? How about about money? If I said, what do you know for sure about money? Oh, <laughs> money. Mm. Well, money is something that can make you mm -hmm. or end you. Okay. <laughs> so if you use it wisely, if you invest it wisely, it will definitely make you. But if you invest it like I did. Of course, if I didn't have any other option, I would have ended. That would be the end of me. Yeah. I would have ended there. So, but I think have you, have, you keep going, which is good. You keep going. Sorry? You keep going. You keep going. Yeah. You keep going, but there, there are some times you'll be like, I have nowhere to go. I have no one to talk to. I have nothing to, to stand on. And have those children. Yeah. And I had. Thank you. I had mm. kids. Yeah. So that was the worst decision I made. You know, if you didn't have kids. children, I wouldn't have talked to you. Sorry? Reason, I wouldn't have talked to you if you didn't have children. The yeah. reason I talk to people with children, they see mm. life very, very differently. Mm -hmm. so, so you want to, you think about your children, you're going to struggle for your children, but then you leave your children. Mm. My message is leaving those children you might rather make a little bit less and stay mm. with your children. Mm -hmm. And the children mm. never understand those things, those big mm. those decisions you are making to go mm. to America and make the big money. You left them, they're young and all that. So mm. my message here is, because it happened to me, I had to leave my children, that's why I'm very passionate about this. And they talk to me, how they feel like when you are not there. Okay, you're on the phone, you're sending things, you're doing all these things, but you are not there. Mm. So being there with your children is so so important in fact i'll take this opportunity to also mention these are my opinions people say oh you say like this it's not happening to you P putting young children in boarding school mm. also a problem mm, yeah three year old three-year-old people take babies to boarding school like yeah? i'm a witness <laughs> you are yeah i saw that how are you? Okay, you are a witness, but what do you think happens to those babies? 
I think my baby spent like a month without even brushing. Really? Because when they came back, they were they were like from another, they were like animals from another kingdom. They were so different. Everything had changed. How Their old were they? had changed. How old were they? they? They were like, they were not my kids. They, you know, there are some other kids from other backgrounds and the teachers don't even care. The moment you pay their money, that's all. How old were they, these? Uh, to last year. The... The older was was nine years. Yeah, nine years, and the younger was seven, was six. What? They don't even brush. That's strange. So, but let yeah, me the middle child was six. It doesn't matter even if they love them so much. It's still the same story. They still want to be with you. Mm. They still prefer to be with their mother. Mm. Mother's love is very very different. So let's mm. try to do our very best to be close to them. Yes, we know what they need. And they can mm. ask you to tell you whatever they're feeling, which you can't tell those other people. Remember when mm. they're, they're just seeing them as a number, their name. But mm. do they really care how they're feeling? Mm. I don't think so. So let's do our very best now. I have another something to say uh, that if there was someone watching right now and they were they're considering what you are considering then what mm. would you say to them as we close this this is the last mm. part of the discussion what would you say to someone if they they are like looking and selling their plot and doing all whatever they are and sometimes they're not selling their stuff for you you are lucky you had something they are mm. selling their parents stuff they convince their mm. mother to sell the land or something mm. or to take something to the bank to get this mm. money what would you say to them? Well, now that I know, mm -hmm. uh, going to America, I think you should be allowed to work. You only have to go if you are allowed to work. Yeah. Yeah. You only have to go if you are allowed to work and maybe if you've won a lottery. Because at least there are some chances there. No, the lottery, if you win it, it's not a chance anymore. You want it, you want it. Okay, when you, this is what happened. Let me go briefly through mm. what, you know, if someone, but I'm not a lawyer. I'm not talking like mm. a lawyer. I'm not giving you advice. I'm just saying what I know. Mm. If you're considering coming to America, mm. I know if you are lucky enough to get the visitor's visa, then if you have some friends, there are some things they can take care of. If you got the visitor's, visitor's visa, there's so many mm. things that happen. Mm. But if you are just someone is just convincing you that they can get it for you, just know that you have to be able to prove that your stand you have in the country where you are. Anyone looks at you like for me when I first went to get a visa, they gave it to me because I was working for Uganda Revenue Authority at that time. They look at the oh, job. Yeah. Yeah, what yeah. are you doing? What's your bank statement? What, what, can you afford it? What mm. is the reason you are going? All those mm. things because. Mm. Let me tell you the other ways you could come to America. For if you want to come as a visitor and you have the job and have the money, you can come for the convention. Mm. The convention that comes in August, late August, and those people have mm. a ticket. So you pay mm. for the hotel, you pay for the convention, you show you have the ticket, the money, and everything, mm. they'll do it for you. So after mm. you do that, you just submit your name, they'll send mm. your name to the embassy. I think they're still doing it like that. So that's, mm. that's the easy way. I, if you feel you qualify. You don't even need those urgents. All you need to do is you book the hotel to register for the convention. You book the hotel, you do everything. They'll put your name and send it to the embassy. They'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're still doing that the last time I checked. So the other way is the lottery. Please, please, please. Those people who know me, I always share. They just finished. They just finished the round for this year. For, for this year. So around mm -hmm. October next year, they'll do it again. They do it every mm -hmm. year. In Uganda right now, People are going through because mm. there are some countries who used to have large numbers and their numbers are done. They have a quarter. So now the other countries can't participate anymore. So you're going to have higher chances. Please do mm. the lottery. Because the lottery will give you the opportunity to come with your children and your husband and your wife or everyone. But you have to have at least a six education, high school education. If it's S4, mm. maybe have some kind of a little bit of more of education after S4. 
So that one, right? Is the best mm -hmm. actually. The other mm -hmm. one is if you're getting married, someone is marrying you, they marry you from Uganda first, then they can file for you to bring you here. Okay. The whole thing is done in Nairobi. Then you get mm -hmm. what they call a resident an immigrant visa, the green card. The other way, student. They say for students, they come, they have to prove that they have the money. That's the easiest way, actually. You mm. say you're a student, you have the money to pay, there's a semester, you have to put some money to show that you have the money. Mm. That one can come. But remember, when you're a student, you are not allowed to work outside like a normal person. Mm. You are supposed to stay in school. So if you mm. don't stay in school, they're going to report you. Because of the what happened here, students did some things. You have The professor has to know that you can't disappear from class. If you're not in class, it's required to report you. So you have to be really in class. So if you have someone who can pay fees for you, you come as a student. That's the easiest way. You get the mm. B2, the, the, the paperwork they give you, the visa. So you come, you stay in school. If you're a very good student, then the companies can sponsor you. Like when you finish school, companies can sponsor you, work for them, then you get the work permit. That mm -hmm. one is, is, is a good one, too. In America, you need a social security number. Without a social security number, they nothing you can do. So a student mm -hmm. gives it to them. Like the, the number they give in Uganda now. They call it what? The one you, they give mm -hmm. you Yes. What do you call it? Nin. Yes. It's the same. Mm -hmm. Say it in full. <laughs> uh, national ID, it's right? a national ID, national ID number. National ID number. That one, that's the American system. Without it, you can't do a thing. People who say they make a lot of money in America, there are people who make money, but mostly they have to go into nursing school and take care of the old people. You have to do some training to do this. But then you also have need the work permit, right? People, yeah, it's very, very expensive also to learn. But if you can learn and be patient, there's no quick money in America. It's never been there. It's not there. The other people who come, professionals, if you have the skills, the very unique skills that people don't have, I know someone who came recently and they were, they were able to get a job, but allowed to work though. Allowed to work, they can work, but the companies, yeah, they, they, they give you a job because that's the other thing. The level of education we have in Uganda sometimes is not enough to give you a job here. You have to go back mm. to school first. Whatever, mm. you have to first go back to their school system and learn mm. the way they do their thing. I mean, if you're a nurse, mm. you just come here and work in a hospital, you have to go and train again. Yeah, mm. very, very expensive. Mm. Yeah, so, but you learn from people. At least have someone you trust tell you. The thing I wanted to mention was the those people flashing cars and they have a lot of money. You can have a lot mm. of money if you come to take care of an old person, for example. You live in their house. It's like being a house girl in Uganda. That means mm. you leave your house, you're not paying rent. Every money they give you, you can send home, right? It's like those people in Saudi Arabia when they go. So you don't mm. have any expenses. But the way we live our mm. life, rent, we pay rent, we pay for everything. If you want the good life, you want the car, you want all that stuff. So mm. the other thing I wanted to mention is America, we are living the credit system. Mm. So there's a lot of borrowing. So mm. someone can just use the credit card and buy so many things, even $10,000. You think it's their money, but it's not. Mm. When someone is driving a car, they go to a car loan, they're driving a nice car, but it's on a loan. Someone, they have a house, I bought a house in America, it's a mortgage. They're paying every month. So those yeah, things, I've heard of that word. The what? Mortgage? Mortgage. <laughs> yes, mortgage. But they're introducing mortgages in Uganda too. It's like the house belongs to the bank. If you don't pay every month, they will take it. That's a system. So when someone comes and they don't want to tell you what's really going on in their life, when they borrow, they're not going to tell you they're borrowing. When they're driving a car, you think they bought it the way we buy cars, uh, cars in Uganda, right? That car you had, it was your car. In America, yeah. there are some people who buy them cash, but there are few. Most cars are on credit. And America is very, very, very expensive to live mm. there. Yeah, very, very expensive, depending which state where you go. But where we live here, I'm in Virginia, uh, Boston, uh, New York, California, those are very, very expensive st states. So when you, people are saying, oh, I work so many hours, I'll make the hours. Can you imagine 
if they pay you okay twenty dollars per hour and you make maybe how many 40 hours that's eight hundred dollars right those are the ones who are educated you you went and go to school and made the money you have to take care of your bills over here the mm. insurance the rent the gas the electricity all that stuff then also take care of people where like you with your children send some to uganda that's why you see mm. that some people are working two jobs they work one job they work another all we do is work in america if you didn't know that yeah work 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 they say yeah i can work okay remember they told you that everyone who cleans or does whatever what did you say leaves something so tell that story before we close i think it's they told me the least um the people that get the least money mm -hmm. they are these i don't know how they call it because i've never been there but they said they clean those leaves from the streets yes right now it's time for leaves it's a fall yeah why it's called vacuuming they said for them they get between four four to five millions a week calculator let's take the, <laughs> low, let's, let's take the lowest four million that's like a thousand a thousand dollars in a week right uh, Okay, let me tell you something about the, the leaves. They don't exist all the time. Right now, we're in the fall season, so the leaves fell off the, 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 the trees, right? So they are down. They, now it's time to clean the leaves between now and the same, like a month or two, and that's it. So we don't clean leaves, we do leaves every year, the whole year, all the time. And also, when someone makes that kind of money, let me tell you how that would be it means they have a business of cleaning leaves. So they, ha they have a truck, they drive. Do you have the truck? You have to buy the, you know when I said trucks, like a pickup, right? Mm. They Then they have employees to mm. go do this. They do for one house to another house, to another house, to another house. Maybe they can make that, but then they have to pay the people who are doing the work. That's a business. Not you, one person, doing that. And if you have a chance to do it, you're going to do it. It's a seasonal thing that happens. Mm. Yes. Okay. So very, very interesting. So what are the lessons you think we'll get from the, this whole thing? Well, the lesson I'm getting from, okay, the lesson I got from everything before even what you told me, I think you should always, always ask the right question from the right sources. <laughs> right question because i couldn't even think i don't even know why i did because he was working on on those paperwork he knew everything about the visa but i was so so stupid to ask him why why are you not in america why are you in uganda uh-huh but the people ask me why am i not going back to uganda why am i in america if i ask you, I <laughs> so why. i was i was so naive i couldn't even ask him but you you have all the access why are you in uganda I think that person I didn't know had that I was in America. I do, sorry? I don't think that person had ever been to America. I doubt. Not even in Dubai. <laughs> I but don't do think even I don't think he's even ever been to Dubai. But if someone is processing papers for you, by the way, people take money from people just processing the this lottery. The lottery one, filling it out for you. So you be mm. careful. Some of them are even fake. But if they are processing it for you properly, that's fine. You can give a little fee to fill it out properly. But those of you who know me, I always share the link, the right link for that lottery. You can do it yourself. All you mm. need, at one year they had made it harder. They asked for, or they wanted to take on the people with passports. And then they realized that not everyone has a passport. So all they need is six education and your photo. You, you, you put your photo and that's it. So when the lottery picks your name they'll send you an email and say you went through and then they ask you to process some paper you have to prove the education you have to prove security in uganda you have to prove your health and if they're good you go to nairobi the federal an appointment interview if mm. everything goes well you can come to america and you can work and you can do everything uh, although there's some other thing like sponsorship or stuff like that but those are easy to do that's the only time I would say sell your plot. Because now you know at least you're allowed to work. Mm. You to do, mm. to sell. But some people, what they do, if you pass through, for example, you, you mm. can say, let me first go. And then I'll process my children after. 
That's what some people do. So okay. that's my wish for you. Keep mm. putting in the lottery, the lottery, the lottery, but also the uh, no closing note. What I say closing, I don't close. What you need to know about children in America without mm. the second person that is helping you, maybe your mom or someone, no one takes care of children, your children. There's no one. So daycare is so expensive. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That's why you that's see that you, you find two parents, one sit, stays home and another goes to work. Because the amount mm. of money made by the second person is it's the same as what they pay to take care of the children. Mm -hmm. It's very, very expensive. So when you have children, like you, if you went through, you could say, let me leave the children for some time, maybe put them in boarding school or somewhere, and then go work until mm -hmm. they're a little bit older. Mm -hmm. When they're a little bit older, then, because we have laws, you can't even leave children at home by themselves. I think mm -hmm. here where we are, it has to be at least, what, 14, 15, whatever. What age, they say? They can't be at home by themselves. They have uh, hours. They say, okay, if you have a 15-year-old with young children, you can't be away for more than these hours. Mm -hmm. So you can't just go to work and leave a 15-year-old at home with your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so those laws, you have to understand that it's very expensive to have children over here. So think, ask, ask people. Say, okay, how does this happen? How does this happen? But when you come, make sure you're allowed to work. If you're not allowed mm -hmm. to work, at least talk to someone who's already there who is saying how they'll deal with that situation. The other easiest way is to get married to a citizen. <laughs> and I think that is the hardest way. <laughs> no, that's the easiest way, actually. Because and people means, take it. If some people, if someone is saying yes to marrying you, that's the easiest way. They go and file for you. You get to work quickly. <laughs> and, and people choose that option. No, it's a common option. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's how people switch. When they come as visitors, that's how the easiest way to switch. I'm not giving legal advice or asking you. Yeah, the person marrying you, they want to marry you, right? Hmm. Yes. Assuming they want to marry you, you better be special. Hmm. I think that option, I can't take it. You don't take who? you. If you got it, the good one. No, I can't. Because you have all the the, uh, the the benefits. But how about my kids? What do you mean? You are about to go the other time without your kids, remember? No, I know. But at least there I can say I'm independent. I can, I can do whatever I want. So what if this person says you're not going back to Uganda? No, so no, what no. Happens? Actually, they want to support you. No, those are not the issues we get. You, you you get married, you have your children, at some point you'll be able to have to file for them too, at some point later though. No, because you are not, you are you, the only stage you get to is getting a green card. You are not a citizen yourself. But okay. I'm surprised you said no to that. That's a, that would be a privilege if you got it. It's a good one. Because wow. you are allowed to work, yes. Independent, no. You need them that person because they give you access. Mm. Yes, and then you can travel, you can go see your children, and later they can file for your children. The person who married you can file for your children. That means it depends on how good he is. Yeah, now you get into relationships. Let's call this one. <laughs> That's different. Yeah, the people have deals, they do dealing, they deal. Okay, okay. yeah, but just mm. know that marrying a citizen is one of the best things that can happen for you in America. Okay. Yeah. So thank you so much. We talked yeah, a lot. We, I wanted this to be like if someone is asking me about this and stuff, I can share this video. I said, go watch her story. So you are not coming to America soon, no? <laughs> yeah, with time. <laughs> Just to, you know, my wish for you is that to make mm -hmm. money, by the way, let me take this opportunity to invite those who are watching. Come learn to make money online. See how you see that if you made 250 more, now you'd be comfortable to add 250 USA dollars, right? If you took this seriously online, you can come work slowly, slowly, the dollar comes, the dollar comes, then you figure it out. Because we have things that uh, we call like brand deals. Look at, when you have a good audience, you can start recording videos for companies. They pay you. Hmm. Okay? Yes. 
there are so many opportunities coming up, even in Uganda itself. If you become very famous mm. over here, in Uganda, they can you can promote companies in Uganda. Mm. Pay you, some mm. money. you know what I mean, right? So in closing, okay. in closing, what do you say to the people who are thinking about going and going and going? That there's if if the mind for me, I'm thinking it's a mindset. If your mindset is say, I want to do something here in Uganda, you can do it. And I'm inviting you to come, learn from us, do something online from home. Okay, what do you say to them? Especially if they have their mothers leaving their children. First of all, get the right information from the person that is staying in that country where you want to go. Mm -hmm. First, get the right information, everything about that country. Yes. The cost of living, uh, everything, culture, everything. Yeah, understand but it. My, but my, my advice is, I will repeat it again. If you're making up to two millions a month, please, mm. you can make it here. You can. Uganda is not that expensive. Okay. You can make it here. Okay. So, what ideas do you have for them that that are not online? Now you call them for online, but local in Kampala. What could you do right now? Well, there are a lot of jobs. There are a lot of small, small jobs. You can start anywhere. You know, for me, I don't talk jobs. I talk business. Yeah, there are a lot of, okay, for us, we call them jobs. Well, everything, we call them jobs. But there are a lot of business opportunities. Here. No, be, be specific. What could I do? Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to go as low as possible. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether they will say maybe I'm trying to, to put them down. No, no, no. Go low. I know someone who started a chapati th something. Mm hmm and he has now like six stages. Can I call them stages? Mm -hmm. like he gets he gets he gets twenty thousand every day from from each station. Mm -hmm. So that's sixty thousand on a daily basis. That's enough. Yeah. So if you get sixty thousand daily, that's a hundred and twenty uh, in two days. How much are you going to make a week? But but if they have station, that means they're people. They have to pay some people, right? All you have to do, okay, we need to go into that again. All mm -hmm. you have to do is buy this stuff, put everything for him there, then let him work. The moment you buy the, the stove, you give him the, the capital. I think capital can take up to, let me say, 150. Mm -hmm. You can start up uh, that small business at 150. Then you tell him everything is on you. You buy charcoal, you buy the the cooking oil you buy the the, the ngano, is it ngano? then what i want is my money you'll be paying me as your boss twenty thousand. it's like the border border business oh, okay so it doesn't matter yeah. how many they make yeah if they make so many chapatis is for their benefit thank you that's for oh, their benefit it's like a border border thing too oh okay so yeah. chapati business they are, uh, so why why would the other person want to do that they can't do it themselves my dear, there are some people who can't even afford uh, 50,000. Okay. They are, they are in the village somewhere. You know, they don't even have the knowledge. Maybe they can afford it, but they don't have the knowledge. Okay. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a, a, a partnership of talking. Maybe on TikTok, we come and discuss. We we'll give okay. people ideas, these kind of ideas. Okay. Uh, because I'm very passionate about this. I want people to learn to be independent, to create their own mm. money. And mm. for those who want to come online, I say create your own America. Whatever country you plan to, you, you are wishing to go to, you can create it there because you're going to make be earning in dollars. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you for trusting me, <laughs> trusting me in a very short time. And sorry, we made it so long, but hopefully mm. you got some benefit from it. Uh, for me, I'm very passionate about inviting all of you to come create your own thing. It doesn't mean you quit your job. But it means mm -hmm. if you are already out somewhere, Saudi Arabia, UAE, wherever you are, still come and learn. Maybe mm -hmm. because, yeah, because at some point, if you really start slowly, since you have Wi-Fi, like where you are, you learn. And by the time you go home, you can mix it up. You have a little thing coming online. You have a little thing local, multiple sources of income. That's how you create the independence. Okay. Thank you all yes. so much for watching. Thank you, Dina, for coming. So Thank in the you. bottom of this video, in the description, I'm going to put your TikTok. What else do you want to share? TikTok account, what else? 
Yeah, my Instagram account. Oh, Instagram too? Yeah. Okay, and I'm sure they're going to see us more. We're going to be discussing more about these issues, okay? Yeah. Thank yeah. you all so much for watching. Please add a comment for us. Let's see. And go <laughs> check her out and me too. And those of you, if you know anyone who has that kind of, some kind of story like this one similar, especially if they have children, they left their children, they think of leaving their children. I'm very passionate about that, ladies especially. Please email me, info right there at honestsouls.com and say there's a story over there, over here. Okay, some people are sending me, but I'm saying no to some people. It depends if it's really matching what I'm doing. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah.